It's look, uh, I'm I'm from Brisbane, Australia, so you know it's got to be asked. Uh, why has it taken thirteen albums for the Hammer to fall <laughs> on Australia? Um, yeah, I wish I knew, man. Uh, I, I for me, I, w I think it's more a case of us not having the right connections. Uh, we we didn't really I, our booking agencies uh, agency from the day one has been uh, German. And they didn't have anybody buddy to you know that they normally work with down there, and we haven't really pushed them into finding somebody either. Uh, it's we've been pretty busy with the rest of the world, but uh, thing is also I don't think Australia has been uh, up for this. Uh, maybe you know because uh, I, I put Australia in the same category as the US and the UK, and it took a long while before things started moving down there too. So um, I, I think that's part of it also as well. But mostly it's our fault. I, I can admit that. <laughs> Mate, what do you think it is about Sweden that is so conducive to good metal? Something in the water. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I, I think it's um, partly it's because we the music thing. I mean, I, I grew up in the 70s and the 80s. And uh, even in the 90s was the same, I think, for a while at least, um, where you, the, 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 the city governments were really encouraging people to, to do music, you know, whether it be playing the flute or the trombone, which I did for four years or anything else, you know, then they made, uh, made it easier to get rehearsal rooms. You shared it with a bunch of different bands, you know, but still there was some place for you to rehearse. Uh, and st stuff like that. There was it, it, there was a lot of facilitating going on from that. Uh, so that helped, of course, a lot. But um, I think also once you you know go a little bit deeper into it, uh, because if you look at the Swedish metal scene, which I'm sure you have, because you asked this question, uh, but you have uh, so many bands that stand out in so many different genres. Uh, you know, and then they're not just doing it for the hell of doing it. They do it because they believe in what they're doing. You know, if you if you go from uh, Hammerfall and Sabaton in Flames and Harker Superstar, you have Ghost, you, whatever. You, there's uh, it never ends. You know, and I think that in Sweden we have a very strong sense, at least within the metal community, we have always had a very strong sense of individuality we never wanted to copy anybody else we wanted to do our thing and there, at any cost basically you know the, our our thing was the most important thing uh the so I, I guess you could call it the the art art history was more important than uh anything else and uh, uh, just the to be recognized as what for what you so nobody would uh confuse you with anything else and i think that not everybody of course thinks like this obviously not Mm -hmm. But I think we have a lot of, of uh, uh, maybe it's my generation. <laughs> I don't know. It could be. Uh, at least it comes from there. Uh, but but uh, I think that's part of it, too. You know, you have this, this drive to be unique. Uh, I, I know I have always had that. I, I never cared what anybody else thought. I just wanted to do what I thought was best for me, you know, the, the, what I love to do. Well, it certainly worked for Meshuga. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. Worked for a lot of bands. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, of course, you you can't just do that. You have to have some substance, and I think that's where the music background comes in. You know, you can have the drive and the the individuality, but if you don't know what the hell you're doing, nobody cares anyway. And Michelle guys sure know know what they're doing. That's for sure. <laughs> As someone who has, I imagine, spends a lot of time around European metal festivals, what are some do's and don'ts for a good battle vest? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. I don't really have, I haven't had a battle vest since, well, I didn't ever had a proper one, I don't think so. But I had a, a jeans vest, at least, a couple of them, uh, end of the 80s, early 90s. I still have one of them left, actually. Uh, but um, I, I guess your favorite band should be uh, the biggest back patch. I guess that's uh, rule number one. At least that's how I would do it. Um, but I love, the, you know, we get to sign at signing sessions. We get to sign a bunch of these almost every time. Uh, and it's so much fun to just find a place in between where everybody else signed and the other patches. Uh, uh, because, you know, that, that this is a, a thing. 
that they've worn to every show that they've been to since they made it. You know, it's, it's their uh, uniform, basically. So it's, uh, it's a very cool thing. It's just, um, since I don't have one, I don't know the do's and don'ts, really. Uh, that's how I would do it. You know, I would just put... put uh, and then the way I, what I would do also is put um, patches on there that were maybe a little bit... Just This is what I would have done if I was, you know, did one when I was a teenager or, or younger, at least. Um, I would have put patches on that you didn't see in every store, you know, it's like unique patches that, that, that meant something to me, of course, you know, and that's, that's number one, obviously, mm -hmm. but, um, that uh, also something that maybe not everybody else had. hundred percent. I, in your time of, of signing battle vests and stuff, did you, do you remember seeing someone that were just like, Britney Spears? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a really cool thing. That would have been wonderful if you just hid one weird, uh, <laughs> one weird artist among all of that. Uh, the other ones. That's a really good idea. Uh, yeah. I have. Uh, there's a company called Last Exit to Nowhere that makes um, uh, merchandise for fictional corporations from movies. So I have like a bunch of ones from like you know terminator 2 so skynet oh, wow. so i actually have yeah. uh two on my back uh whale and yutani corporation from aliens that's underneath my and um uh -huh. and amid all the patches on the front there's one for cyberdyne systems from terminator 2 and people are like oh wow. i haven't heard that band <laughs> uh, that's very cool very cool i love that idea Mate, what are um what are some of the albums that changed your life and why um i always have to mention balls to the wall because that is how uh when that song came out recorded off the radio no no my brother had it actually or his his, his uh, friend had it on a tape um and you know how it is when you have do you have any brothers or sisters yeah yeah it's not i mean you love your brothers but it's not always friendly they, they don't always let you do what you want to do right <laughs> especially not when you're growing up and we were just one year apart too so a year and a half in between us so i'm, he, I'm uh, born in 72 he's born in 73 and he had a friend over and of course if i wanted something and he was in the position to deny me that he would 100 percent of the time do that so uh his friend had this tape with the balls of the wall on it i i like metal i listened to metal before i just never understood what it kind of like that this was a a, a, a thing I liked, uh, you know, I had a couple of albums with Judas Priest and, and Accept before, but I, I I just didn't really link them together somehow because I didn't have a bigger brother who loved this stuff, who could teach me stuff. I had nobody. I, I taught myself everything, basically, myself. Uh, so when um, I heard Boss of the Wall, except uh, a band I liked had a new song out, uh, I wanted to buy, to buy, listen to it and my brother chased me from the room because i wasn't allowed to be there when they uh, whatever so i sat in the stairwell uh, and listened to uh, i i thought this sounded absolutely great i wanted to hear more of this so when they went out uh to do some mischief probably uh i was snuck down in the living room they were the only the only place we had a stereo at that time was the living room so i snuck down there and um yeah, i played that song over and over again uh that's when i I mean, I, that, that's when the first time I realized that this is something I absolutely love. And it's the only thing I really love at that point, except for sports, you know. So that was a, a big revelation for me. Uh, I have to mention another album, too, is Come Out and Play with Twisted Sister. Because I discovered them with the Stay Hungry, the, the videos and all that, you know, the, the we're not going to take it, and I want to rock at that. But uh, Come Out and Play was the first Twisted Sister album that I waited for. And uh, the lyrics and words of Dee Snyder have meant so incredibly much to me over the years. Uh, still do, to be honest. So uh, that changed my life as well. Even though I was, uh, it was more of the same wonderful stuff that they've always done, uh, it did change my life in that respect. Because uh, there are a bunch of songs on there, uh, like uh, I Believe in You, for example, is a really good song. Uh, one of the best ballads that I know. Uh, but you also have, um, uh, I know, uh, we got, for example, uh, spoke to me a lot. And, uh, there's another one that has a really good, uh, uh, good lyrics. Well, I can't remember at the moment, but, but my point is it made you, uh, it was, um, 
empowering those lyrics now because being a metalhead in the 80s was not great easy you know people were looking down and you looking like you're the pariah of society for the most part uh so when uh, d snyder encouraged you to um follow your dreams and live your life and fuck everybody else you know fuck what they're thinking uh that spoke really loudly to me and that's how i live my life ever since basically uh it's turned turned out pretty okay i'm, I'm quite happy with my <laughs> life so <laughs> but uh but yeah so uh, and i gotta mention uh screaming for vengeance also with priest uh because i mean now we're going really way back that was the first priest album i bought i bought it off a friend who uh that, I, I don't know if he liked it or, or just wanted to money to buy another album i don't know but um that album was has been very instrumental in me uh in, in my i mean accept as well but also priest you know the the guitar playing of kk downing and uh, glenn tipton have been uh instrumental for me in how to write songs how to play guitar and how to put guitar to the guitars together uh it's it's you, you cannot uh overestimate the, the importance of that album for me yeah so how do you think you've evolved as a guitarist in the time that uh, Hammerfall has been around? Um, well, the, the, in the very beginning, of course, we knew nothing, you know? Yeah, I was so green, had no clue about anything. I mean, I did record a couple of albums before with, with death metal bands, but I still had no idea what the hell I was doing. Uh, case in point, the first time we ever played outside of, of uh, Sweden was the Vakken Open Air in 97. It was the first show on a eight uh, eight show tour with uh, Tank and Raven, you know the British classics, uh, and uh, we had we shared all of us shared the same crew. We stayed on the same bus and shared the same crew. And I'd never had a crew guy before, you know, a guitar tech. I never had. I didn't even know what the hell he was. So when um, <laughs> when they <clears throat> when he asked me like before the show, I give me your guitar, I'll set it up and whatever. And I said, no, why should I give you my guitar? I need my guitar, you know. I didn't understand it. <laughs> when I got the guitar back for the show, we played the intro. I remember this very well because it ruined a lot for the <laughs> for the intro. But I couldn't help myself because I had never had anybody else tune the guitar before for me, uh, and I I didn't know how to trust anybody at that point, you know, because I I, w I needed to make sure it was in tune. So I was during the intro, I turned, uh, duh, 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 you know, bunch of chords just to make sure all the strings were were in tune. Uh, and I was nervous, of course, too, you know, but that was that, that's so that's how green we were back in those days, you know. But then you learn, you know, learn by doing is, is a, it's a great way of living. Uh, you know, you learn, uh, you learn from your mistakes and you, uh, you know, correct them so you don't make those mistakes again and you can make other mistakes in the long way. But, <laughs> in, in, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, once you, uh, you get to a certain level, you have a certain, uh, certain, uh, idea of how to do things. But I'm still never. I was still never a great guitar player. I I think I I, I was um, not developing very fast. I was never practicing because I hated practicing. You know, I look. I didn't never. I never got into this to be a, a like Ingrid Malmsteen or you know Van Halen, Eddie Van Halen or somebody. Never my intention. I hate. I, I, it, I hate practicing solo. I mean scales up and down. It's never been my point. If I pick up a guitar, you will hear riffs. You know. My favorite riffs, maybe or whatever it is, but you will hear riffing, not uh, solo playing. Um, so I, I, I was never really great at that. But I made a, a, a New Year's resolution once. Uh, was when 2010 turned into 2011. I made a decision to myself, and then by this point, I was almost 40 years old. <laughs> so, uh, but I made a decision: I'm going to be better at guitar. I'm going to learn how to be better at guitar. Uh, and I took that actually seriously. So I did start practicing, maybe not practicing scales, but practicing some licks and stuff. I, Pontus, our other guitar player, gave me some ideas how to, to, uh, um, to, you, you can use this as a warm up and you play this and whatever, and it's going to help your solo play. Uh, and he was 100% right. So, so that's, uh, that is, so I'm, a, I, I would say I'm 10 times as good now as I was in the, uh, you know, 20 years ago, at least 10 times. Um, still not great on at that. I mean, but I have a much more, uh, much more confidence in, in myself in those respects. So if you could, if you could meet yourself from 1993 and show him a copy of Avenge the Fallen, what do you think you'd say? 
um, your dream will come true. <laughs> That's what right. I will say. Nice. Uh, looking back over over the you know the span of Hammerfall's existence, what stand out as the the high you know some of the highest and by contrast some of the lowest points. Um, the one of the lowest points in our career was when we uh, we, we did take a break from everything. We we put the band on hiatus. It was never finished. Just we need to take uh, eighteen months now and do something completely different. Uh, it was various things that led up to that. It was um, a process that took a couple of years to to get to that point. But it was management stuff mo uh, for the most part. We had never really had a management. We tried to. Uh, we decided to try it. We went with one, didn't work out. Went with another, was even worse. Uh, and those things. Uh, there was a bunch of other stuff too uh, uh, that that played a role in this. But it also it meant that we weren't having fun anymore. Nobody was looking forward to the shows, to the tours. It was just too much. And I mean, we had been doing this for fifteen years, so it was started to to get to you know the the, the hamster wheel of of just going through one thing to another. Um, but the one thing that we didn't do was fight amongst ourselves. So there was never any friction, and and that's why we could do this. I think there was never nobody felt like oh fuck, I'm glad to be to get rid of that guy now for a while. That was never the case, you know. It was just a matter of, of we have to take a break from being in Hammerfall for a while, you know, from being Hammerfall, Hammerfall, Hammerfall all the time, so people could do whatever they wanted to without, uh, without, um, uh, uh, without going into uh, uh, something, knowing that well, I'm not sure if I can say yes to this because we're going to have Hammerfall stuff in in a while, you know, uh, so. That part was a low point, but it also led to a high point because <laughs> when we got we came back and, and uh, uh, started to record the, the, the next album, which was uh, Revolution in 2014, uh, that was it's a kick in the ass with a good, good feel, so to speak. It was a boost of injection because everybody had sort of recharged their batteries and left everything um, out, they left everything behind them. Everybody who, who, uh, who was still there uh, so to speak. I mean, everybody who decided to go on uh, was there for the same reason, and we have been a much, much closer band since then. A much better band, I'd say too. Yeah. Well, see, who who do you see as the kings of metal, and why? Uh, Manowar are the safe, self-proclaimed kings of metal, and they do have a, a, a case for it for sure. <laughs> so there's no question about that. Uh, I, I, but I think. This is very individual, you know. This is how uh, how how you look at your metal, so to speak. You know, the metal that you listen to. Uh, so the kings of metal for me uh, might not be the same for any, everybody else or for anybody else. Uh, but I think the kings of metal. Uh, I mean, Twisted Sister is not really a band that I would categorize as heavy metal. Really, I mean, they did in the eighties because that's how you know didn't have a ton of subgenres and shit, but um for now i would say that that's not really metal in the same way as man of war is for example or hammerfall but um anybody who who uh has that attitude because me metal is so much more than just the music it's also the attitude that i live my life on my own terms and i live my life by my own rules because nobody else can tell me what's best for me and that is the heavy metal spirit and anybody who incorporates that is is a heavy metal uh heavy metal uh, uh, master or what was the hey, king of heavy metal I yeah think. well for, for a point of contrast who would you crown queen well the first name that comes to mind is doro <laughs> that was it just popped in you know let's uh, so that would be the the queen of heavy metal for me nice. on on different uh, for different reasons but there aren't, aren't that many uh female vocalists or female uh musicians uh now there's a ton more than there used to be but there's still in it, it isn't that many uh but i would say actually uh, doro and another german vocalist uh, i would say her name is um uh, jutta weinholt from uh, a band called Z uh, Z oh fuck uh i had it on my on my um Zediago. 
uh, Zediago. And but that's not why I know her from more most. It's mostly from. Um, holy shit! I'm bad with names today. I know the. I can picture the album cover in front of me, but I just can't remember the name. It's ridiculous. Um, oh, Velvet Viper, Velvet Viper. That is uh, because she has an incredible voice. That album is so underrated. It, you, yeah, that's a really, really good album. Uh, I don't remember the name of the album. I just remember the cover. But uh, but yeah, those two were the queens of metal for me. Awesome. Or are. Easy. Oscar, mate, thank you very much for your time. Um, no worries at all. But very. Be... This was a very unusual interview, but I loved it. I had a oh, good time. Cheers. I try. I have <laughs> a lot of people saying that, uh, yeah, these, these just seem like you know, kind of conversations that you'd have on like yeah. Joe Rogan or something. And I, I'm okay with it. So, yeah. <laughs> That's absolutely the, be- absolutely the best interview, the best feeling. It feels like if you're just answering questions all the time, the time runs really slowly. But if you're just talking to uh, 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 to people about the stuff, you know, subjects that you like, uh, it's just a conversation. And that's the best interview for sure. So, well done. Oh, cheers, man. That's oh, <laughs> on top of the mood. Uh, thanks very much, man. <laughs> Have a great uh, day. No and worries. All the best yeah. for the tour, man. Enjoy it. Yeah. Thank you very much. Take care.